All right, welcome back to the Fantasy Labs Podcast. This is Brian. I'm here with Justin. It's Sunday night. We are back from Christmas break, and we're ready to knock out some many months of basketball. Justin, what's up, man? Not too much. Uh, glad to have you back on the pod. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took a little hiatus there, but yeah, good to be back in the, uh, the saddle. And uh, yeah, 11 games slate. You know, the, I, I thought I thought Silver was supposed to come in and and you know lighten up the schedule this week, but we got. A lot of 13 games get uh, slates this week. I think like two, and then we've got 11 on Monday. So, mm, yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it is kind of surprising because we have been a little lucky with the schedule over the first couple of months. But, yeah, it's getting a little brutal now. Um, but, we'll, you know, we'll get through it. So, uh, let's jump right in uh, and get to – all these games, again, uh, 11 games on the schedule for Monday um, and some some pretty big injury news for some teams. So we definitely want to touch on those for sure. Uh, so we'll we'll run through them. We'll start with Atlanta at Indy. Uh, and the line that I have is uh, 206 and Indy is two point favorites right now at home. So um, I'll kick it to you as far as uh, starting on the Atlanta side. Uh, and kind of going through maybe some cash game play, or I guess just you know what you think of the guys. Yeah, Atlanta Indy um, Hawks uh, two point underdogs here uh, implied at one hundred two point three. Um, only injury news we have on Atlanta side is Thiago Splitter uh, ruled out for the next two games with a strained right calf. Maybe opens up some minutes, uh, more minutes in the front court for uh, Mike, Mike Scott, Mike Muscala, um, you know, and those guys. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm still not totally on, um, any Hawks for cash, you know, Teague's been, you know, the hot hand as of late averaging 37 DK points over the last week, but I don't love this matchup against George Hill at all. Um, and you know, I think you can look at Paul Millsap, uh, potentially there. Um, you know, he's always a really safe, uh, floor type, um, 7,600 on DK and, um, 8,300 on FanDuel. So I don't mind a little Paul Millsap on, on DK uh, if you're looking at, you know, 50-50s and, and want to pay for his floor. But otherwise, um, not too on any Hawks here. So does it worry you that Millsap would probably get PG on him, I would assume? Yeah, he'll get, he gets some PG. Um, you know, I think he gets some Lavoy Allen as well. Um, yeah. But – yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily mind. I think okay. it's not ideal, but he still offers you a solid, you know, a good bet at, for for thirty DK points. You know. Yeah. So him and uh, him and Horford both had a great game, um, which is a little surprising. They they've been struggling for a couple games there against you know Detroit and Portland. Portland's obviously not a, a matchup that's super hard. So uh, you know they go into New York and or I guess they have a home game against New York, who is a pretty pretty good interior team and Millsap and Horford both go off so uh, I think there's a lot of upside w- with those two guys especially in this matchup with Indy you know obviously their bigs aren't great but you know other, they're just a, they're a little GPP to me they're a little uh, up and down so I, I don't think that in 11 game slate you really have to go cash w- with these guys I think that they're you're right Millsap would be the guy that you want but um you know, I think really they're just kind of good GPP options, and, and I think Milford, uh, I'm sorry, Millsap, Horford, and Teague are all are all fine GPP options. You could throw a base more in there if you want to as well. Yeah, I agree. I I, I don't love Millsap as cash, but at 7,600 on DK, that's an implied of like um, 30 points, and I feel yeah. like a pretty good bet um, to hit that, even with you know not a great spot. So yeah. Um, yeah. That's I, don't, I, I don't mind Bazemore at all in in, uh, in GPPs. I think he'll be a little under own because he's been um, you guys have been seeing you know his fuller minutes. I think um, in this game it's going to be a little closer, so I think he could be upwards of you know thirty to thirty three minutes at at uh, on the wing on this one um, yeah. instead of you know closer to the twenties that he's been seeing as of late in, in more lopsided uh, affairs. Yeah, I agree with that. And on the indie side, we'll move over there. So this this one's a little interesting to me because the line is is fairly favorable to to indie here. You know, they're they have a pretty good implied total. They're favored. They're at home, and I I really don't really love anybody. 
Yeah, PG has been struggling for a while now, and yeah. um, I liked his spot, uh, you know, recently against um, the Kings. Uh, yeah. Or yeah, and you know, he did come through with forty and a half there, but you know, he's been very hit like or miss. Forty mid. minutes, yeah. I mean, it yeah. wasn't even that great. Five for nineteen in that game, which was you yeah. know a sh- big struggle. He, you know, he basically salvaged it with with four steals and ten rebounds, but. Yeah, his um, shooting's been awful, yeah. His shooting has been awful. I don't think he's been above uh, 50% in the last 10 games. And, and you know, I think his best over that, that stretch is uh, 46.7%. So, yeah, definitely an extended shooting slump for him. I think he's definitely more GPP than cash. Um, and I don't particularly love anybody else on this team for, for cash either. You know, even with this 104.3 implied, it's weird. Um, I think just kind of like collectively, um, you know, you'll see a bunch of guys and, you know, the, the mid to high 20s for, for DK points. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, for me, it's it's almost like I, – so I think Paul George, in his slump, he's a little overpriced right now. Um, obviously, in GPPs, that might work out because you could obviously get him at a good ownership discount because he's overpriced and slumping. Uh, but the rest of these guys are all just like – kind of fairly priced so like i think you know ellis and george hill and jordan hill and mahimi they're all going to probably perform right at their salary level um or a little bit lower but that doesn't really help you anywhere yeah and i don't think they offer a a high enough ceiling to to gamble on gpps either i think uh, pg you know his price is okay it's 89 on dk and 88 on fanduel um, yeah. Given where it's been in the past and given what we know he's capable of doing, I think yeah. that's reasonable, especially for GPPs, but definitely in cash, um, you know, in the 11 games, they have so many options. So you don't, feel, you don't, you don't need to be, um, I don't know, taking shots like here and, and hoping that he, he finally uh, snaps out of his slump. Yeah, I, yeah, no, yeah. I think he's. I think he's a good GPP play uh, because he's going to snap out of it soon. I mean, like there are some guys who slump, um, and, and you see this more in NFL. Um, and, and I know that you know we always talk about, especially in our NFL podcast, we want to find guys who are slumping, but we know are elite talents. Um, and like this, obviously Paul George, like we know he's an elite talent, an elite player, and he's going to get out of the slump eventually. Um, he might he might hurt your GPP teams until then, uh, but then he's going to pay off eventually. Uh, so I, I don't mind just kind of rolling him out there in some lineups um, until he pays off because eventually he's going to pay off in a, in a pretty big way as his ownership level keeps on going down. Yeah, let me see. His implied is probably um, around thirty eight at it's at thirty nine point six on DraftKings. Yeah. So yeah, like, he's so he's flashed forty point potential. I think he's he's hit forty DK points in three of his last five. So yeah, at least he's like even in his horrific slump, he's still he's still okay. Mostly hitting value. Yeah, like in three of the last five games, right? So I, th- you know, I think if the shooting comes around on top of the supporting stats, is that's booing his value right now, mm-hmm. then. Uh, you could be looking at, you know, potential 45, 50 DK point performance. And obviously that's GBP material. Yeah. Cause his, you're right. His supporting stats have still been there. I mean, he's still like racking up steals, uh, rebounds and assists have been great. So yeah, you're right. It's really just the shooting and that'll, that'll come around. I mean, he, he's a, he's a fairly streaky shooter. Um, you know, the yeah, like he's, he, takes a, he takes a lot of like long twos. Like his shot selection this year has not been that great, which you know explains why you know he's been so erratic with the shooting. It's just so many long twos. Oh well, yeah, I mean, look at his look at the people around him. <laughs> I feel like that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, cool. So a lot, so some PG in tournaments, and then you know, if you want to go uh, Monte, that's fine, but not not a whole lot. I wouldn't focus on indie side here. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Let's keep on moving. Uh, Clippers at Wizards, uh, and the line that I have is two hundred six and a half. In another close game, Wizards are one and a half point favorites. Uh, so yeah. So obviously, biggest news of the slate. Uh, it, you know, we've already had one game to kind of see how they would deal with it, but Blake Griffin being out uh, obviously changes a lot of things up for the Clippers and kind of the value of the slate for sure. Yeah, and I think. <laughs> It's it was super tilting to see uh, 
how Doc decided to utilize Josh Smith or not utilize him. Five minutes, was it? Yeah. Yeah, he played five minutes to start the game and then never saw the court again. I don't understand why you would start him and then just give him that short of a leash. You know what? Yeah. It wasn't even like a horrific five minutes. I mean, Josh Smith has played a lot worse yeah. in his career than those five minutes. I think it was like 0 for 2 or something. Like, you know, not terrible, but you. But look at your bench. Like, I don't know. Yeah, what are you going to do? Right. You're going to throw out Luke Bamute for, for 30 uh, plus minutes every night and yeah. you know, hope, hope that's the thing. I, I, you know, I think that you know, during this stretch, you kind of have to look at guys like Josh Smith and Lance Stevenson, kind of kind of guys that can potentially be difference makers in the playoffs and kind of experiment and see what you have. Because right. when it comes to the playoffs, guys like Bamute, um, guys like Wes Johnson aren't going to be the answer. You know, yeah. so you have to like – try to spark something here and hope mm-hmm. hope to find um, a little a little something in this uh, in this rough patch but yeah you know we saw kind of usage a little concentrated uh, really among uh, three guys I, you know I think those three guys are the ones you want to definitely look at and target moving forward that being Chris Paul uh, DeAndre Jordan and JJ Redick and DeAndre we saw last year how dominant he was when Blake was out I think he was you know, close to, wasn't it like 20 and 15 or something like that? I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, he was crazy. averaging over like, yeah, he was averaging like over 15 rebounds. Yeah. It and was the, point, yeah. the points were there too. I yeah. think, mm-hmm. you know, surprisingly, I think people under, underrate him a little bit on that. And he could do a little bit more, you know, when, when it's kind of necessitated. Right. So, and yeah. we didn't necessarily see that last game, which I think is going to throw people off. But, I mean, it wasn't a great matchup against uh, Utah, who was, like, not bad inside. Right. And he still finished with 43.3 uh, DK points, DeAndre yeah. did, which yeah. is really solid. I think Chris Paul was kind of disappointing at 43 and a half. I think he can have much better games than he did. And, um, yeah, I, I think DeAndre definitely – cash for me um, in this spot, Mm -hmm. Uh, even against uh, Gortat, who has been pretty stout. Um, I think J.J. Redick is 100% cash. You know, I think, what what is he at? Let me see his. 51 on DK. 51 on DK and 4,800 on on FanDuel. So I think that's. He's easy on FanDuel for sure. Yeah, really easy on FanDuel, especially at shooting guard. Mm -hmm. Um, And. Yeah, I think I think I'm fine with Chris Paul too. I think he's. I'm fine with all three too. I think yeah. he's definitely up there in, in consideration. I don't think you want to go to the Paul Pierce well uh, too often here. Um, I think you know we saw he you know definitely showed out 31.8 DK points and played really well as a small ball four. Yeah. But uh, you know this is an older Paul Pierce here, and the legs aren't going to be there every night. So I think he's definitely more tournament for me. I'm just hoping that he has one of those. Um, one of those nights where he's kind of feeling his rhythm and you know and getting in a little bit of a groove, but I I wouldn't count on him um, again coming through like that. Yeah, I I don't even really love him that much to turn him to play. I, I mean, I guess you could go that. I mean, he's playing his old team, so revenge game here. Um, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it, I mean, I get the I get the minute bump. You know, he got up twenty seven and had thirty one point. Eight DraftKings points shot really well. You know, it, it helps space the floor with that you know small ball lineup. But I, I'm not really sure that they're. I just don't trust Doc's going to do that again, really. Or like, not because he shouldn't, but because I don't. I just have no clue. I don't really trust that he's going to use Josh Smith or Paul Pierce or any of these guys like enough minutes. I think he might just all give him like a couple minutes and then just give a bunch of guys a couple minutes and get to like twelve guys on the bench i still don't know how many minutes to project josh smith for our next game i have i would have no clue yeah i mean what do you do there what I if mean, he I starts would... i don't what, what did, does he start again i think he probably he would start again i don't know I guess so and i would probably put him at like 25 minutes but then <laughs> like he could he could have five minutes again i mean what are you gonna but do he can play thir- he could probably play 30 too. yeah he could go yeah he could go 32 <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is just what, yeah. But but the thing is, Pierce has 3,500 on DK, so that's an implied of 15 points. 
and I don't know, you reasonably project Pierce for like at least 24 minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, see, that's what I'm worried about. You're worried about that even? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because we saw him, we saw kind of what, what was asking like a best case, and he played twenty seven, right? Twenty seven, yeah, and they're flying across west to east, playing in Washington, and like yeah, and it's I, I just I'm not betting on last game being indicative of their rotation at all. Yeah, we just I, throw that out. Yeah, I mean, you start with Josh Smith at five, and I think you definitely throw that out. I don't think that made any sense at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I have no clue what to think of these guys. I mean, maybe Lance gets some more time. I, I have no clue, really. Like, yeah, you're right. They're not going to be able to play Paul Pierce 25 minutes a game for the rest of the season, or at least until Blake comes back. Pierce yeah, maybe a little bit more back. Wes Johnson. Um, they didn't use Jamal Crawford as much as I kind of thought. I see. Yeah, that's what, I thought they would just go, like, super small. Uh, right. Just go four around with DeAndre, but they didn't. Yeah, I thought, I thought they would – go more like, um, you know, Chris, JJ, um, and Jamal all together. Right. Um, and they just didn't do that very often. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I have no clue how to predict it. So, I'm definitely kind of not on any of those guys in cash despite their prices. Um, and, like, I think they're fine EVP plays because I think probably one potentially might go off. I, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, so DJ at seventy two hundred on DK is um, pretty easy. Yeah, uh, CP threes at nine K on both. I, I think that's fine. Yeah, and then um, let's see, Reddick is forty eight hundred on FanDuel and fifty one hundred yeah. on DK. So yeah, like we said, forty eight hundred on FanDuel, pretty pretty easy. I'm fine with five one on DraftKings. Yeah, too. I'm cool with that too. I like it better on FanDuel, but like I I wouldn't mind paying five one for him. Agreed. Um. Yeah, I think I might like Crawford as a tournament play tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah, um, the minutes just haven't been there. I don't know why. Like, if you look at his minutes log, I, I've been doing minutes. He's been close to around 20, even, like, yeah. even with them all healthy. I, I think he's fine. Um, I I just, yeah. I, think he's I, fine. I, I just don't know, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about these lower guys. Uh, I, I guessed very wrong last game, and, and I bet I, I bet I'll guess wrong again. I I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I like I, I'll call it. Josh Smith is going to like it's going to be a Josh Smith game. See, I There's think no Josh Smith. At all. I think Josh Smith is the play here, just because people were so let down by him last game, and that I don't think it's going to be where he's only going to play five minutes again this game. No. Yeah. Well. Yeah, Maybe. I agree. I mean, it could be. Yeah, just take a just take a shot. I think he's the yeah. most reasonable play here. Yeah, and I think he has the highest upside of the guys playing. Right, because I think I projected him for twenty five minutes on like Friday, yeah. and then he was still like, I don't know, really up there on my models, like at least top ten. So yeah. even I, I I was pretty conservative. I feel like at twenty five as yeah. a starter. Yeah, I mean, he's not afraid to take usage for sure. And there's usage usage available too. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I don't right. know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Enough about them. Uh, Washington. Um, so yeah. So I think Wall's definitely still fine. He's probably the hottest point guard in the NBA right now, as far as fantasy wise. Um, should have gone with my uh, should have gone with my heart on that last one, where you guys try to talk me off Wall. Mm. Remember that? Yeah. 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 You're right. My bad. Uh, he, uh, yeah, I mean, he's killing it right now. Kind of doesn't matter price, doesn't really matter matchup. You know, theoretically, a, a Chris Paul matchup is not the greatest one, but I, that doesn't really worry me. Um, you know, Gorta has been really good lately too. The the only thing that worries me a little bit here um, is that he's probably not at value anymore at seven one. His price has come way up, um, so I think that's probably right at his value. Um, so it's fine. I think he has a pretty safe floor, but it's not like you're getting like a high projected plus minus guy that's going to like really kill value for you. Um, and yeah, and then you can, you know, we can kind of go down. Uh, I'll kick it to you for your thoughts on uh, on Washington. I'm still good with Gortat, really, uh, in cash. You know, he's been at... He's safe. 
Yeah. I, I, I still think his floor uh, realistically is close to his implied. His implied is around 32. I think his floor is probably like 28 or something like that, like high 20s. Yeah. And he's been at 44.4 um, over the last week. So yeah. he's shown that – um, just by, yeah, I, this is a, this is a tough spot because you like, we like Chris Paul and DJ and then we like wall and, um, wall and Matt, so guys going up against each other. And I think, uh, you know, I, am not, you know, the matchup isn't gr- ideal, but I still think it's, it's fine for, for both sides where I'm, I'm comfortable rolling, uh, rolling both, uh, both duos out there. Um, yeah. yeah um, with, I mean, the Wizards are still really banged up. Uh, Bradley Beal, Nene, Drew Gooden still ruled out. Um, we still have to wait for Gary Neal. Word on him, I think his availability kind of affects Garrett Temple, uh, how much I like him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kelly Oubre looked really good, uh, even with uh, Otto Porter back. But I expect Porter to play more than he did um, in his debut. I think he only saw 19 minutes off the bench. Uh, maybe Oubre, there's some talk that Oubre might start another game. Uh, just to keep, uh, just to let Porter kind of work his way back into things. But given the likely split there in minutes, I think it's probably, um, you know, 26, uh, 24, something like that uh, with the split. I, I don't like, I don't see them either playing enough minutes for me to really like either. Yeah. Well, my thing with Ubre is, um, like, I don't think I like him at 4-1 in cash. Like, I don't trust his floor enough for cash. So then you're talking, you know, if you do like him, okay, then you would like him in tournaments. But the problem is, is, like, I don't really know his upside here. Um, I mean, if you kind of look where he's been at, like, you're right. He did play really well last game against Brooklyn. Um, yeah, he – yeah, yeah, right. Was yeah. it Brooklyn? Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, against Brooklyn, he played 32 minutes and had 25.5 fantasy points, which is fine, but that was kind of best-case scenario for me, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's close to the ceiling. That's, that's, cl- that's about close it's to the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah, and that's, like, not that great for me in a tournament. Like, in a big field tournament, like, I still want more than 25 points out of, out of guys. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. No, agree. Like you want, you want the allure of potential. You know, if things align and he has that big game, he can go thirty plus, right? Yeah, I want thirty plus. Yeah, and I don't think he has thirty plus even on his best night right now. I think he'll be a fine NBA player in time, but right now, in a rookie, you know, just getting his starts, I don't think thirty plus is even really that possible. Yeah, and with Otto Porter kind of getting back and playing more minutes, then it's only you're only kind of looking down from here. So right. Yeah, so Wall and Gortat are the plays for me, and that's that's about it. I, I'm okay with some Temple here and there, depending on Neil. I think we said that, yeah. Yeah, Temple, let's see where you want him. 4,900 on DK, and where are you at? 4,300 on FanDuel. Yeah, so he's a lot better on FanDuel. Yeah, so get him on FanDuel if, uh, if Gary Neal's out, which I think he probably will be. Um, not a lot of optimistic talk about that uh, strain right quad that uh, – yeah that Neil's been dealing with um, that's led to, I think, a, a back injury as well. Yeah, and he's playing a ton of minutes. So, um, yeah, I, I like him on FanDuel a lot for sure. Uh, cool. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Lakers at Charlotte. Uh, is the next game over under 201.5. Charlotte's big favorites here, 12.5 is the spread. Lakers coming off the of back-to-back. Um, <laughs> Lakers are funny, you know. Um, they have these weird rotations, and then was Byron Scott came out and said, "I will not change the rotation until at least January." Like he like needed to make like an ultimatum on like when he was like people care about uh, <laughs> like, the date that he's going to change his rotation. It's just so weird. Like no one asked him for like the date he was going to change his rotation. Hey man, you never know. They might they might peel off like two straight wins and just crush crush two crush two teams during that during that stretch before the end of December. It makes no sense. He did this last year, too. I need to try out this lineup for 15 games. That's his thing. That's his thing. 15 games. And he, like, won't back off that. Yeah. It's, it could it's be the so, worst lineup ever. And it's he's so rigid and yeah. so arbitrary. It makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. 
There's no data that backs up 15 games. There's no data that backs up that you shouldn't shoot threes either, and that's right. what Byron Scott um, believe. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so the Lakers are obviously not very good, coming off a of back-to-back, um, really poor performance today. Um, kind of as to be expected of the Lakers. They're kind of – they're to me, they're just as bad, really, as the Sixers. I know their record doesn't indicate it, but they're awful. Um, you know, they have some promise here. You know, I, actually, I, I think Russell's been playing really well. Um, the problem is, yeah, he's just kind of screwed with the guys he's playing with and the coach. He just is – in the worst situation a really a, a rookie point guard can be in. So, um, you know, I think some of these guys are interesting and no, nah, none of them are really interesting to me, to be honest. I, I think Kobe is, is fine in a tournament, but other than that, and, and I guess you could go Randall too, because they're the guys really with the high upside, but I, I would definitely know cash Lakers for me. Um, and, and even then with Byron's dumb rotations, I don't really like any of these guys in tournaments either. Yeah, I don't mind a little um, exposure to Randall and Russell in uh, in tournaments. I think this is one this one will probably get pretty ugly coming off a of back to back, and um, I think I don't know Charlotte's defense is good, so yeah, even, you know, even then, like very little even, exposure. Yeah, this isn't even a great spot like to attack. It's not like you're playing. I don't know, like the like the Clippers uh, second unit or like other second units that are really leaky defensively. I think. Um, yeah, so I'm off Kobe. Uh, he's he, he's dealing with that right knee soreness, and he's hopefully uh, says he's going to play. So mm-hmm. I have to keep an eye on that. But yeah, yeah, uh, not not not, not great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then on the other side, uh, looks like Batum is questionable. Uh, yeah. And obviously, this is a great spot here. But I guess the question is always with the Lakers. You know, do you trust the fact? Do you trust that they can hang in in three quarters? Yeah, Batum is probable with the oh, right hand okay. condition, and uh, Marvin Williams is probable as well. Spencer Hawes is doubtful with lower back tightness. So, yeah, I think 12 and a half spread, um, but you have a 106 and a half implied total, which is the second highest of the slate. So, I think you want a piece of this game for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you just kind of have to be selective of where you get it because of the blowout potential. Um, I think Batum. Let's see. Batum at seventy two hundred on Fanduel. Seventy five uh, on DraftKings. Yeah. Yes, it, it, that's fine. Uh, yeah. He's been he's been crushing lately. You know, I think yeah. uh, he had, definitely has to take uh, more of the. Um, you know, he definitely has all around potential, and I don't think Al Jeff is really fully back yet. He only mm-hmm. played eighteen minutes off the bench, so Batum is still going to see you know his a little bit of a usage uptick than than he usually would because. Al Jeff is still limited. So right. I'm fine with the two at 7,200 on FanDuel. Um, you yeah. know, Kemba is playing massive minutes lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, he saw 39 um, last game. I think he's been, you know, close to or around 40 uh, for the last couple of games now. And, you know, even in a blowout, I, I still think you can pencil him in for like mm-hmm. 32 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think that's enough. In um, in those limited minutes against a horrible uh, Lakers point guard defense, for him to be um, in consideration at seventy three hundred on uh, on DK. Agreed. Yeah, I, I'm fine with with both Kemba and Batum and Cash uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I do like Kemba a little more on DK, uh, but I do love them as both as tournament plays. Uh, obviously, I mean Lakers. Of course, uh, you know they both have fifty point potential, really. Um, and, and then the other guy, I, I don't really love the other guys for for Charlotte um, in, in casual or tournaments, with the exception of I, I don't mind some Jeremy Lin in tournaments. Yeah, Jeremy Lin fifty four and DK fifty two on Fanduel. I like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been playing a little bit more off the bench uh, at the expense of uh, Jeremy Lamb, mm-hmm. and um, I don't mind Kaminsky either. A little bit of him. Let's see what his price is. It's probably dirt 44 on DK and 4K on FanDuel. So I don't mind a little Frank the Tank, 4K on FanDuel uh, coming in, especially with Spencer Hawes being doubtful. I think he's going to play a little bit more than usual off the bench, and he's at uh, 26.2 over the last uh, week on DK. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't mind a little Frank the Tank here. Yeah, I mean, like we were talking about Paul George, um, you know, a guy that's an elite talent. 
Um, <laughs> okay. All right, okay. moving on. New Orleans at Orlando is the next game we're talking about. Uh, and the over-under here is 203.5. Orlando is 4.5-point favorites. Uh, so New Orleans, whew, what a brutal Christmas game. Man, that was tough. Oh, yeah, it was tough to sit through. I, I can't believe we got overtime on that and got gypped on the Warriors game. Uh, yeah. The, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just a, a struggle. And, yeah, Andy Davis is still um, the play here. And yeah. uh, let's see, 10-4 on FanDuel, 10-5 yeah. on on DK. I go with him on both. He's, yep. you know, crushed yep. uh, as of late. And the only thing you have to worry about, obviously, uh, the injury risk, but um, he's been, you know, yeah, he's looked dominant as usual and yeah. uh, probably one of my, if not my top cash, elite cash game play of this slate. Um, always demands that um, with his talent. Uh, we go in, how do you feel about Tyreek? 7,400 on FanDuel. Um, you know, he had a brutal Christmas showing. I yeah. still wasn't awful his finishing line because he managed to to to, to uh pitch in a little bit of, of the rebounding and assist yeah. to, uh, to save the shooting but yeah. are we uh, are you considering Tyreek there yeah i am um i, I am not scared of this matchup I, I know orlando is uh is pretty pretty good especially at the, the i would assume that uh he would get the he would he would probably get a, a fair amount of minutes with ola depot on him um which is obviously tough. So, um, so I, I probably prefer him in, in tournaments for sure. But I, I do, I kind of do like this spot. I do think that he has kind of elite upside. Uh, he's a triple double threat, and um, I think it's a good spot. He's still pretty cheap, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I don't mind it at all. He's just still going to see plenty of usage in this one. And um, no. is he is he probably more tournament for me though? Yeah, he is um, me too. Yeah. A little bit too volatile for me to trust in cash, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't mind. I, I, I guess I would probably be a little off cash because I'm worried about the the defensive matchup. But right, um, yeah. So maybe more tournament for me. Um, and, and they're going down. Uh, I don't think that either of these guys are, are cash plays, but I, I do like Rhino, uh, Ryan Anderson in tournaments, and Eric Gordon's been getting forty plus minutes the last two games for whatever reason. So. Um, because those minutes will go to like Alonzo G. Yeah, no, no. no. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I agree with them. Um, just they've just been way up there in the last two games. I, I know part of that was overtime and that might. Right. But um, so I mean, if he's getting forty minutes, he's always a guy that could get hot shooting. So I, at five two on DraftKings, I don't mind tournaments for sure. Yeah, I think you get. I think you like. I haven't looked this up, but I think he has like half his production in like the first quarter. Like he and then does yeah. nothing the rest of the game. So just hope like he goes full clay in that first quarter and then does enough to hold you over for the rest of the game. Yeah, I yeah I'm good with that. I mean he's he's pretty cheap and he's getting enough minutes where you can you can stomach that for sure. Uh, Orlando's side, any of these guys interest you? Yeah, I'm all over Vooch. I think Vooch at. Um, Vooch at seventy four hundred on DK is still way too underpriced for me. They're just, that's just how centers are on DraftKings. They're just always underpriced. Yeah, but I think the thing is that this matchup I really like too, and um, New Orleans has been really, really bad against centers so far this season. Um, I, I I'm all all about um, him seeing minutes against Omar Ashik. Uh, you know, against uh, Kendrick Perkins. I don't care who's mm-hmm. there. Uh, Vooch has showed, you know, 40 plus, you know, he can, he can chip in 40 plus DK points in any yeah. game. And yes, I, I'm, I, I just like him a lot, especially in a four and a half point spread. I think this will be close enough. That's the biggest concern with uh, Vooch really is just how many minutes he'll get because uh, whenever he sees minutes, he crushes and he's always a very, uh, you know, per minute um, yeah. He's a he's a very good permanent guy for sure. Yeah, no, I, I love him as well. He's yeah, these DraftKings centers are always underpriced. So um, obviously at seven four, I, I think that's 
pretty underpriced to where he should be. Uh, not just kind of just in general, let alone this matchup. So when you combine those, for sure. Uh, on DraftKings, I really like the idea of um, you know potentially pairing him and DeAndre. Uh, I think they're both really good value, so I don't mind going double center. Yeah, slate for sure. Um, and, and the rest of the guys, uh, is there any other cash guys? Uh, they're more more tournament plays for me. No, yeah, my tournament plays on this team are Tobias Harris and Evan Fournier. Fournier has really been heating up lately. I um, mm-hmm. just kind of hope that he can um, extend that hot streak and, and carry that over. He's been seeing more minutes too off the bench. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't mind specking a, a Fournier a 5,200 on both DK and FanDuel. And we've seen, you know, early on in the season what he's capable of when he's on. Um, yeah, he's killed it, yeah. Yeah, he crushed early in the season and just kind of tapered off. So I think he's kind of getting back into the rhythm and, and kind of, you know, finding his shot now. So yeah. um, I don't mind uh, some exposure. Yeah, uh, agreed on them. Uh, and and I, I don't mind some Alfred in tournaments too. Um, I know he's volatile, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little worried about the Drew matchup, too. I am, too. Yeah. Drew's a really good defender. Yeah. I, I No, I, I get the concern, and I get that he's been up and down, mostly down lately. Um, I, I, just, I think that he has a lot of upside on a kind of every night basis, kind of independent of matchup. Um, so, like, yeah, so I would minimize my ex- exposure, but I, I never, like, completely fade Alfred in tournaments. Uh, okay, let's keep on going. Uh, next game we'll hit on is Brooklyn at Miami. Not, not a great game here. Uh, over under is 194. Miami's nine point favorites. So yeah, so obviously we we always fade guys going against the Spurs, and I don't think Miami's at that level by any means. You know, Spurs are historic defense, but Miami just really kills everyone's fantasy value on the opposing team. So a uh, really tough spot here for Brooklyn. Yeah, I think people sleep on the Heat's defense yeah. quite a bit. And we kind of – yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think Norns is a great barometer, but they've been play, they've been shutting teams down consistently the entire season. I think they're at, at minimum top five in defense efficiency, if not higher. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of on that second level or behind the, the – you know, right up there with the Spurs, the Warriors, the Celtics, and, and those guys. Um, yeah. yeah, this is a – this is a, pretty much a terrible spot for uh, for the Nets and second lowest implied point total of the slate at ninety two point three. Uh, I don't know. You could have a little uh, tourney exposure to Thaddeus Young uh, at seven K on Fanduel, but I think that's really iffy in and of itself. And I don't love the matchup uh, against Bosch and Whiteside. Uh, but, I, I don't know. I, I think you're. I think you want to stay away from this team overall. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a complete fade. Yeah, I mean the guys. The, the problem is, is the guys that you always want on Brooklyn are the guys that like you really don't want to go against on Miami. You got Thad going against Chris Bosh, great defender. You have Brooke going against Whiteside, great defender, and they've been shutting down point guards. We saw what Tyreek just got. Yeah, I don't want any piece of Jerry Jack yeah. regardless. So. Right, and those are the three guys that we would want in Brooklyn. Just awful matchups. But, but I think I think if you're going to choose like the the softest quote unquote matchup, the more the most beatable of the three positions, it's power forward. I think it's that. Yeah. Um, so I'm just saying, like you know, if you choose, but it's also the highest off, price. Yeah. True. 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 Yeah. No, I, I get the no, thing. no. Dad's that's cheaper on Fanduel. Uh, Brooks will eight eighty one hundred on Fanduel, oh. and that's uh, that's seven k. Brook is wow. He's eighty one and six nine on DraftKings. Ooh, yeah, okay. probably quite a quite a difference there. Yeah. And, uh, um, it, yeah. So even I, I guess, I guess in theory that should p- potentially put me on him on DraftKings. That probably indicates that he's underpriced, but I still can't go there. Um, yeah, you don't want to mess with this matchup, and I think I think like best case, you're kind of hoping you're you're probably going to see like a twenty two point four rebound performance. I, the the rebounds are going to be brutal against Hassan. He's not going to get. I, I think he'll struggle to get six. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, uh, I'm probably going to fade Brooklyn altogether in in yeah. the sort of cash. I yeah. think there's not enough upside to really warrant putting money on it um so Miami though are, are you on them obviously this is a better matchup on the other side 
Yeah. Um, Chris Bosch has been playing out of his mind lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't mind some tournament exposure there. I probably won't cash him. Yeah. Uh, Whiteside, kind of the same thing. Uh, you know, 7,500. I think uh, Bosch is a little more cash. So Whiteside is purely tournament. Um, but yeah, I agree. They're, they're both more tournament than a cash. Yeah, Bosch at 7,100 on, uh, on DK is about as close as I'll get to cashing him. But yeah. I still think it's, it's borderline on a, an 11 game. I don't think I'll yeah. end up in any of my cash game lineups there. Same. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can make an argument for Whiteside. I think, you know, mm-hmm. um, I th- massive blocks potential, obviously. And uh, we kind of saw he didn't play a lot in that Pelicans game for some reason. He didn't play much at all down the stretch. But I, his halftime line was absurd. Yeah. Like, we saw what he could – I think he I think he has, like, double-digit single quarter potential. Like, I think I've seen him have, like, 10 rebounds in a quarter before. Yeah, he's crazy. And this would be a good spot to do it against Brooke and Thad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Brooke definitely can't rebound, so. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, this is a good spot. It's a good tournament spot for Whiteside. I think it's a pretty good tournament spot for Bosch as well. Um yeah, a lot of missed shots from Brooklyn in this one. Going to be a lot of missed shots, so a ton of rebounding opportunities for uh, for Hassan. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then uh, these guys definitely are not cash, but I don't mind some tournament exposure to uh, Wade and Drogic. I, I probably won't go Dang or Gerald Green or any of those no. guys, but uh, uh, some minimal exposure to Wade and Drogic is, I think is fine. Maybe more Drogic than Wade, but... Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not too exciting. Okay, uh, let's keep moving. Toronto at Chicago is the next game. Uh, Over-under here is 196, so another low one. Chicago's two-point favorite. So uh, even though it's not a high total game by any means, you know, we have two really good, um, you know, defenses here. Uh, You know, we at least have a close game, so we have some potential overtime, potential, you know, maybe it could go a little bit higher. So, um Maybe some intrigue here, despite the low line. Uh, Toronto side, uh, where are you at with them? Yeah, let me let me throw, let me throw it back real quick to that last one. I think I agree with you on Dragic. I totally forgot he's going up against Jared Jack, so that's like super. Right. Easy. So I, I don't mind turning exposure to Dragic in that last game. All right, so jumping back to uh, Toronto here, it's going to get a little messy, and I usually, I I, I would be on Biombo given the way he's been playing, uh, the 40 DK points for last week, but Jonas Valanciunas is going to be back um, on mm. Monday. He, he's, he, he's been cleared. And there's no word yet on who's going to start, but it's probably going to be Biombo. Um, I, I don't mind tournament exposure there. You know, his last game, he only played 27 minutes and still managed 40 DK points. So, um his rebounding has been off the charts, like close to 15 rebounds for 36, something like that uh, recently. So some, some exposure there. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm not on DeMar uh, on, uh, based on, you know, giving Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. Um, I think Rose is pretty, pr- you know, been pretty good defensively this season, not as leaky as you would expect. So yeah, not too much on Kyle Lowry. And then I'm kind of off, uh, Terrence Ross because Damari Carroll is going to play more than 18 minutes, I imagine, too. So, yeah, that's the thing is Toronto had a lot of value. Um, you know, it's re- really, in, especially with uh, DeRozan and, and Biombo with Valanciunas and, uh, and Carroll out, but now that they're back and everyone's just kind of splitting minutes, it kind of kills the value of everyone honestly. Right. Um, I, I think it'll eventually equalize because when that happens, you know, these guys who, uh, you know, start to kill it and are of value, their, their salaries go up. Um, and then these guys come back in and they're right at their old salaries too. So you have everyone just overpriced according to their minute threshold. So uh, when such situations like these happen with injuries and guys coming back, you kind of just have to fade them until uh, the prices equalize again. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at with, uh, with Toronto. Uh, Lowry. Biombo at 4,900 on FanDuel is fine in a tournament, right? In a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. not terrible. It's, it's, it's not terrible. Um, it's not, it's, 
Probably. I mean, I mean, the Bulls gave up a lot of rebounds. That's the thing. That that front court. Yeah, they they did begin the year. They haven't been doing it as much lately. Um, yeah. Even though um, a lot of that was because uh, Joe Kim was playing well now that he's back out. So I guess maybe that could reverse again and they give up a lot of rebounds. So, yeah, I don't mind the Biombo. Uh, you know, he's still like – it's not like he's like 6K where you, that would definitely be off. Um, so I'm fine with him. And I, I'm okay with Lowry too. Yeah, and DeMar, DeMar would usually be one of my top cash game plays if he was seeing like 39 minutes. I think like a couple of times this year where I knew he was going to see that many minutes, he was like top five in my model, right? And he only played 33 last game. So, yep. yeah, off him again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Chicago side, obviously Noah's out. Um, so that kind of affects everything. And, uh, yeah, so what are your thoughts on, on the Bulls, guys? Um, yeah, I think, you know, Pau Gasol, always, uh, always a strong consideration in cash. Let's see, 7,600 on DK and yeah, 7,600 on DK, not on FanDuel, it was 8,900 there. So 7,600 on DK, I'm, I'm good with, uh, Gasol. I think he can, uh, go 40 plus, like, again, um, like he has been, um, I don't mind, uh, Miritich in, in tournaments. He's starting to heat up again and kind of finding his, his, his shot. Um, uh, Taj Gibson is okay too. Uh, 5,300 on uh, DK, but you want him on FanDuel at 4,700 there. Uh, he's been seeing close to, you know, 34 minutes a game, uh, with no out and uh, pretty safe, uh, floor there with, uh, with those minutes. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm good cashing, uh, Taj at 4,700 on, on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, where where do you think uh, Miritich's minutes are going to be? I mean, he got 40 just out of nowhere. Yeah, he, it's going to come at between the three and the four because Tony Snell is barely playing at all. No, I just meant like minute total. Like where do you think he'll be at? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I looked, well, I haven't looked at it yet because I haven't done projections for, uh, for Monday yet, but I suspect it'll probably be – high 20s yeah because he got that 40 minutes against dallas last game um just kind of out of nowhere which is weird you know um so i think that he's definitely intriguing but yeah i I would not expect him to be anywhere close to that so i think that there could be some recency bias there which is worries me a little bit yeah let me check out let me check yeah let me check out this uh check out that box score and see what uh what went on um yeah because 40 minutes in a regulation game definitely is a little odd um yeah bobby port has only played 10 minutes yeah so that explains uh quite a bit um, i think this was coming off a of back to back too uh you know after they play christmas, christmas people yeah. were thinking bobby port might play a little more uh yeah. because gasol and taj gibson might play less but he only saw 10 minutes in yeah uh mcdermott at 18 Kirk Heinrich at 10, Tony Snell, D and PCD. So I could see Miritich, you know. Up pretty high again. Up, you know, up, up, up above 30 minutes again. Yeah. I think he's definitely intriguing. Um, it, yeah, if that was the case. So him in tournaments is fine. Um, Jimmy, you know, we, we can touch on him. Uh, I, I think as bad as the DeRozan matchup is for Jimmy, I think the, the – DeRozan matchup for Jimmy is is about as equally as bad, so I'm off of him. I think he's a pretty good defender. Um, And then Rose is tournament if you want. As yeah, against Lowry, I don't love that. I don't either. Yeah, I just that's I I don't I like I don't even spend time researching uh, (laughs) Rose. I just say if you want to go in tournament, and I never do. So. Okay, let's keep moving. Milwaukee at Dallas next game. Uh, let's see, total here. Uh, 198.5, Dallas is 6.5 point favorite. So, Milwaukee side, um, I'll kick it to you. Yeah, we got Jared Bayless, probable uh, for Monday. He's been out for a while with that uh, sprained left ankle. John Henson is questionable with a back injury. That's the injuries on that side. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, Bayless coming back takes me pretty much completely off 
MCW. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really trust this team at all for cash. No, Just, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, if you want to have some tournament exposure, I don't mind um, Chris Middleton, who's mm. been playing really well as of late. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't love that matchup against uh, Wes Matthews particularly, but um, you just kind of hope that um, he can continue to um, perform like he has. And I don't mind a little Greg Monroe either. Uh, he yeah. actually saw 33 minutes uh, the other game, and he was around 26, 27 uh, coming in that. So he finally kind of took that leap for minutes, and we, we've seen what he can do with uh, with a consistent like high, yeah. Yeah, minute. So, um, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind exposure to him in tournaments. Either. Those are kind of my two that I'm looking at. Yeah, same for me. Um, you know, if Monroe's going to get above 30 minutes, then his price six seven on DraftKings is is pretty underpriced. If he's right. going to be above, uh, you know, uh, over 30 minutes, so uh, I think he's a great play in tournaments. Um, I, I don't think you can bet on that over 30 minutes, which is why he's more tournaments than cash. Um, yeah, in, in Middleton. Uh, yeah, and you're right. The the Bayless stuff kind of takes me off the rest of them. Um, you know, Giannis had that really really bad game. God, like, horrible game. Nine DraftKings points in 35 minutes. Yeah, that that was generous too. I, I felt like I didn't see his name pop up on the the box score for like an entire quarter at a time. It's like he wasn't even playing. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. It was it was a really bad game. I guess you could. Chalk it up to, you know, maybe DeRozan just played him really well. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, you know, he, uh, before that, you know, he had a, a good game. He had 34 um, or more against, uh, you know, Philly and, and Golden State. So, 6-6 six, six in tournaments, I'm, I'm fine with that too. But um, I like uh, I like Middleton better at 6-1, honestly, given, uh, given I where they ran. Yeah, I do too. Um yeah, Middleton. Middleton's definitely been uh, a lot higher lately as far as his ceiling goes. Uh, really, on floor, Middleton's just been the better player lately. So, um, yeah, I would lean more Middleton than Giannis. Uh, Dallas side. Um, so Darren is is the news here for sure. The the injury news, at least. Yeah. So I don't know what, what his status is really because they're calling him day to day, but they're also saying he's without a timetable for a return. So he's technically questionable um that's what they're listing him as but i think he's definitely closer to doubtful uh, realistically I, I think who was it i it was out of carlisle or darren himself that said uh, that i think it's carlisle that said recently i think on saturday that they're they hope he's out for days rather than weeks and that implies that he's definitely hmm. not that close to a return yeah, so I, i'm going to do this analysis as if Darren's out, even though he's questionable. Uh, so JJ Barea, uh, obviously flame emojis all over the place. I think he's like hasn't missed a shot in like a week now, uh, or at least it seems that way. Uh, he's just making everything from 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 the field and shooting sixty five percent. Yeah, seeing huge minutes as well. Yeah. Um, I think he's pro he's really you know easy cash if. Uh, in the likely event that um, that Darren Williams is out, a five k um, on um, on DK and forty one hundred on Fanduel, which is absolutely stealing. So he's an auto play on Fanduel at forty one hundred if uh, if Darren's out. Yeah, um, I think you can kind of look at Chandler Parsons too in tournaments. Um, he's he's at or close to thirty five minutes now, kind of. Uh, doesn't have a restriction anymore, and he's still pretty reasonably priced. Uh, you know, forty five hundred on Fanduel and you know fifty two on DK, not great. So you know, I think you can look at Berea and in uh, cash and Parsons and tournaments on Fanduel. Yeah, for sure, Berea is uh, is definitely the easy guy to to you know figure out. He's yeah, he's kind of auto for sure. Um, so I, I guess I'll kind of touch on the top guys before we move on. So Dirk. Uh, I, I don't really love him cash, and I'm not really sure that the ceiling's that high for him lately. So uh, I'm kind of just not on him, um, e even in a probably a pretty good matchup here. Um, Zaza is the other guy that we could look at, and, and I actually like some tournament exposure to him. He uh, he kind of like shows up, and I think it's because you know they just like give him minutes in the games that they would really need him. 
you know, like you look at his recent games that he's played well, it's been Chicago, Memphis. You know, these are games that they need him to be a force down low. Is Milwaukee one of those games, though? I think, you know, if, if Monroe's going to play 33, 35 minutes, maybe. Yeah, the thing is, you only saw – yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, um, I don't trust it Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely no cash, but I, – No, I, yeah, okay. If you're not saying cash, I'm, I'm fine with the tournaments, right? Yeah, yeah. He played, he played 27 against Brooke Lopez and still didn't do a whole lot. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't – yeah, I think, you know, you just kind of hope that – um, he gets 29 minutes and can, you know, give you double digit rebounds and kind of gives you a sneaky backdoor double, double and points. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's a reasonable ceiling. Um, okay. you, you don't like Dirk at 6,300 on DK. I think that's pretty reasonably priced given kind of, um, how I see this game kind of playing out. I think it's, he's kind of in a weird quandary, right? Where I don't think he's a strong cash game play, but he's not a tournament play either, right? He's kind of like... Yeah, yeah well, that's, that was my point is, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't know where to play him. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, don't, right? I don't really trust him in cash. Um, but I also, like, I don't want any part of him in tournaments because I don't think he has upside. So then I'm just like, all right, well, I guess I'm not playing him anywhere. So Yeah, I think he's a... And I there's just guys think, like that, yeah. Right. Just don't play. Well, maybe if you end up with a um, you know roster that you really like and uh, find eight guys, and you end up with sixty three hundred and find find Dirk, then I don't mind it. I think he's a pretty safe bet for thirty plus in this one at sixty and at sixty three hundred. I think that's uh, you know his his expectation is twenty four points at that price, which seems like like a slam dunk for him to hit in this matchup. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'm looking at the other 6,300 guys. Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. I'm kind of looking at guys around him. Chris yeah. Middleton, 6'1". Uh, Alfred Payton, 6'2". We got Wiggins, 6'3". Jeff T. Corford. Yeah, so I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, I think he's fine. If he's your last guy, I just – yeah he's not going to be one of the guys that i start my lineup with for sure agreed and, and felon's actually struggled like we he was like when we're talking about darren williams being out he we was like it would be auto, guy. right yeah. triple doubled in the last time that darren williams missed and he's only played yeah um 23 and a half minutes over the last two games doesn't help that uh devin harris is back either uh adds a little um depth and i think um, with the minutes being the way it is, he's kind of off consideration. I agreed. Even though he is like a super sneaky uh, yeah. PPP play, like because everyone's going to be on Berea. Uh, if you want to throw a lineup with, with, with Ray, just in case that for some reason he gets the minutes instead of Berea, uh, which is possi- not probable, but possible. Um, okay, let's keep on moving. Uh, next game we'll talk is Minnesota at San Antonio. Let me pull up the line, 195 and a half. And San Antonio, humongous favorites here, 15-point favorites. So uh, I think it's safe to say we could probably just say no Minnesota guys and move on to San Antonio. Yeah, let's uh, let's take the uh, the CSU Ram mantra. I don't play guys against the Spurs. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only guy – I, I want to play Towns uh, in general, but not against Tim Duncan. Oh. I yeah. want to play Towns. I'm going to – I'm not going to be on the next podcast, but let's save that. I, I think uh, Towns, with the minutes he's been playing. He would be the guy. He definitely would be the guy, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, he – yeah. But they, they, they just played two games ago, and I mean, he's been killing it other than that game, and he didn't play very well, like, which is just how the Spurs are. Yeah. So just like, don't get cute. Right. Yeah, it's 11 games. Uh, all right, so yeah, we'll just move on. Sorry to you know give a short analysis of Minnesota, uh, but so San Antonio side, um, yeah. So I think there's interesting tournament plays, but for me, the uh, the huge spread, especially it being San Antonio, kind of takes me off of them in cash. I think there's too much risk there. Yeah, let me see. Eighty seven hundred for Kawhi puts his implied maybe at thirty five uh, around there. And in his last game against the Spurs, uh, sorry, against the Wolves, in 31 minutes, he put up 39. Yeah, so, I, you know, I think if you're looking for a guy 
uh, he's Kawhi. The yeah. He's the play, but I think he's um, a lower end to mid range cash game play. Just yeah. uh, with eleven games, you just have better options out there. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't see. Uh, I don't want to attack uh, Rubio with Tony Parker. Uh, Tim Duncan's not going to play enough in this one, and I'm not sure Aldridge will play that much either. Yeah, Aldridge played 29 in the uh, in their last meeting, which is not enough yeah. uh, to warrant cash game consideration. So yeah, I think this is going to be a collective effort, and um, you're probably going to see Kawhi as the only guy um, above 30 plus DK points in this one. Agreed, and then I think they'll put the clamps down and finish them in three quarters and then they'll move on to the next game. So I, I really, you know, it should be a, a game with value, but um, yeah, Spurs are just going to like this. So I, I don't think there's really that much to this game. It's kind of Kawhi and that's it. Open, uh, open invitation. Uh, I, I put this out there to the siege DFS on Twitter. If any of you guys take down a GPP with Boban Marjanovic, in your lineup, I'll pay for a month of your lab's membership. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Wow. All right. Sounds good. Cleveland at Phoenix is the next game we'll hit on. Uh, keep on moving. Uh, over on 202, Cleveland's eight and a half point favorite. So, obviously, huge, huge news here is uh, torn meniscus for blood. So, um, which I, I'll, I'll kick it to you because I'm not really sure what that timeline is. Yeah, it's probably, you know, Adrian Wojnarowski speculated it'd be around six weeks. Uh, he's had this procedure, unfortunately, before. Um, it, it's all about the removal versus the uh, repairing of it, uh, th- which dictates the, the timeline, I think. Or is it the, uh, the removal of it is the shorter of the two, but it poses yeah. more long term risk, kind of like what Dwayne Wade kind of yeah, has. Westbrook did that too, yeah. Right. But Westbrook's a freak of nature. It yeah. isn't. He is not them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, let, let's start with Cleveland though first. I think uh, yeah. they're the they're the away team. So um, one one notable thing here is so Kyrie Irving hasn't been cleared for back to backs yet, and this is the first of a back to back. So he sat the second leg um, the day after Christmas. He played against uh, the Warriors. So I'm not sure. To if be he- fair, they all sat. <laughs> <laughs> True, true, true. So I'm not sure if he sits this leg or uh, on Tuesday. So we'll have to keep an eye on Kyrie's status for one. Um, yeah, I think, you know, wh- how are you feeling about uh, LeBron and Kevin Love? Any any of those guys uh, stick out to you? Uh, yeah, LeBron is fine. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw his very, very, very lowest floor against Portland the other night. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think I'm, I'm fine with LeBron at, at nine, eight on DraftKings. Uh, he came down below 10 K for yeah. the first time in a while. So I, I think he's pretty easy tomorrow. Yeah. I think he's, he's fairly strong. Are you, I don't know. I think this might get out of hand. So I'm a little worried about the minutes slightly. It's only eight and a half, but I, I think because it's the first leg of back to back too. Yeah, right. that's that's fair, and they're on this extended uh, road. Yeah, that's that's fair. I think I'm still okay with it, but that is that is a worry. So it might knock him down. Like for like tiering cash games, it might knock right. him down. But he's still. I think he's play probably level. like B plus cash yeah. game play. Yeah, uh, just because of the downside there with the minutes I worry. Um, and, and same goes with love. I'm a little worried about the minutes there as well. And, um, yeah, just the downside at the top. Yeah. I'm off of him in cash for that exact reason. I mean, like if we kind of just look at the games where they haven't needed him, they haven't used him. Like, you know, right. just even a couple of games ago and gets Philly played 20 minutes. Because the thing is like, they have, they have guys like Verja who's DMP CDing on like, uh, close games, right? So they have yeah. depth. They have Tristan Thompson and and mm-hmm. Timothy Mozgov. So they have guys that can plug in there. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm not sure, right? I'm not sure they'll need love. So uh, LeBron's a cash guy for me, and um, and the other guys that are are tournament. I'm fine with love in tournaments, though. Uh, I'm more okay with him. Obviously, I think it's Kyrie's out, but. Um, if uh, if Kyrie's out, are you uh, are you looking at Del Vadova at forty five hundred on FanDuel at all? 
Not really. Yeah, I think I think that's a uh, it's a it's a fishy play. Um, <laughs> I, I I just I. There's so much volatility there, and he has been playing like 27 minutes and still hasn't been like crushing value. He's at like, uh, what is it, um, 19.8 DK points over the last week. That's, yeah. I mean, he can go stretches without doing a whole lot of anything. He just he's out there just uh, just uh, diving into people's uh, ACLs and being uh, being the uh, the reckless player that he is. We'll say. You and Jay are ridiculous. Get out of here with that. We had a huge debate about this. Me and Jay, me and, Jay and, uh, and Brian on our NBA Skype chat that uh, we think Delhi is uh, kind of a dirty player because he has such a uh, history of doing these like completely reckless things where he just like dives at people's knees and their ankles and just does really ridiculously reckless stuff that cause people to get hurt. Yeah. And I, I guess I'll state my my take. I think I agree that he's like a fairly whatever dirty player you whatever word you want to use. Like he has questionable plays. I just don't think that one was that that crazy. Like he has a, he has a lot of bad YouTube highlights, and that one. Yeah, Jay Jay pulled up like four yeah. of them in like a minute. Yeah, like there's some bad plays that he's made where I'm like, all right, Delhi, that was that was rough. But this one was not as bad as those other ones. That was that was my take. Um, which, on, the, on the Delva Dova scale, maybe yeah, maybe it, it wasn't was that. Yeah, it was it was mild. Yeah, that's it's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, so any any of these other guys? I mean, no, I don't know. Shumper, Jr. Smith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's not really upside there, unfortunately. Even if they're getting 20, 25 minutes, um, they're they're just not usage guys. None of them are. Um, Phoenix side. So is this this the first game without blood? So so we're Correct. not really sure what the minutes are going to be. I would assume. So obviously Knight's going to get um, a ton, uh, and I would assume that they'll probably start Booker. Yeah, um, Hornacek yeah. said they'll start Booker at the off bar most likely. Okay. And then the rotation there will be Ronnie Price backing up Brandon Knight at the point, and they're going to use uh, Devin Booker, Sonny Weems, and Archie Goodwin at the off guard and kind of rotate those guys um, back. Can Warren and- play a little? Yeah, they prefer him at the, the at three. Yeah, so maybe, but I, I think Knight will play so much that – there's only going to be like, I don't know, um, 60 minutes to distribute between four guys, you know? Yeah. So, so the, I think the, really the question is, is like, obviously this is an amazing spot for Knight without blood. So like he's going to play a ton of minutes. His usage is going to be crazy, but the matchup is awful. So it's, yeah, choose which one's more important, honestly. You think he's going to draw Shumper? Probably. Yeah, I think I think you can hide Delhi and uh, on Booker. Yeah, on Booker, the other or uh, Sonny Weems or, or whoever. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna it's a tough spot because to to pass up, you know, thirty six minutes and potentially thirty plus percent usage. Yeah, um, at seven k. On FanDuel, it's tough. It's, yeah. it's really tough. Um, I, th- I I agree with you. The matchup is going to be tough, but I I still think he'll get enough volume to uh, to overcome that sure. to an extent. Um, to where I don't think he's an A plus cash game play, but like mm-hmm. you know maybe like a A minus, a, a B plus, right? Yeah. I, at seven K on FanDuel, that's still. It's still really good. No, yeah, it no, it's great. Yeah, everything is screams like auto play, except for the fact that Cleveland's just really good. So, I think you can use this in tournaments, right? I would, I would probably a hundred percent fade him in tournaments, or close to it. Okay, I think his ownership's yeah. going to be massive. Yeah, seen in tournaments. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I'm okay with that strategy. Yeah, that's that's probably accurate. Yeah, he's going to be really high. Um, and I question the ceiling given the matchup, right? Yeah. Well, I, th- I think even more importantly, like when I look at matchup 
it, it's not a, even as like simple as like is Shumper guarding him? Okay, well that sucks. It's the fact like you know some of these these really good defensive teams like Cleveland and Golden State. It's not the one on one matchup that bothers me. It's the fact wow. that the help. Yeah, they're amazing on help. So regardless of who guards Knight, like they're gonna cheat off of Sonny Weems or whoever's on the the line and just send like just have a guy in his line of vision everywhere he's at. And that, that worries me a lot more than just individual. I mean, the individual matches are not great in, in itself, but I also don't think he's going to be able to like penetrate at any time, really. Yeah, and they have really good experience doing that against uh, Steph. And, the, you know, they, they're really experienced at kind of keying in on one guy and kind of focusing on yeah. um, shutting that guy down. So I think, yeah, to an extent, yeah, it makes me worry uh, a little bit, but his price is still at a level. I think if we're three games or four games from now, and um, Knight's salary gets up to mid eight, then uh, yeah. we can talk about a you know a potential fade in cash. But at this level, seventy six hundred on DK, seven K on Fanduel, I think it's still good enough to uh, to play him for sure. Yeah, that, that's obviously the dilemma tomorrow is you know how you feel about Knight, and also you just have to take a stand. Like I'll probably personally take a stand that I I'm not going to be on him. Um, but like, I, I obviously am fine with it. Like, I, I think it's fine if you are in cash, um, or tournaments or whatever, um, just kind of do your own research and figure out how you feel about it and make a stand and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Um, so what, how do you feel about Booker? Yeah. So Booker's a knockdown shooter. I think he's a very good three point shooter. The worry is that he doesn't do anything peripherally other than that. Uh, his his yeah. per 36, uh, averages on the season are, uh, 2.8 rebounds, uh, 1.9 assists, yeah. um, 1.1 steals, one, and 0.4 blocks. Uh, he doesn't do anything else, but uh, he was this way at Kentucky too. He literally right. does nothing. He just he just knocks down shots, and yeah. I think you know I'm intrigued by him a little bit on um, on DK where you get the three point bonus because I think that definitely adds a different dimension to his value. So I'm yeah. fine with him as a punt play at 3,500 on DK. In a tournament. Yeah. In a tournament, preferably. Yeah. And cash for me. Yeah. 3,500 though. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but yeah. Against I mean, 12, 12, 12, 12 points though on DK. So like he, he's a really good cash game play. If he, if he hits like 18 DK points. You think he can do that? I think he can do it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't think it's guaranteed by any means. No, I don't think it's guaranteed. But I'm fi- I'm I'm fine with playing him as a pump playing cash. I don't think it's yeah. a, a slam. It's a no brainer. But I think it's fine for me. Yeah, yeah, the yeah the guys who are just like that score independent worry me a little bit. The thing is, like, he could, he'll probably end up with like sixteen to eighteen real life points, and then like. But that's the thing that that's that means he's gonna get sixteen to eighteen DK points. It's like the Clay Thompson thing, right? But like, yeah, but no, he, that's exactly what he is. He's Clay Thompson light. Yeah, like he he. I think I think he has a lot of similarities with Clay coming out of college. Um, you know, knockdown shooter, great stroke, um, just raw and doesn't do that much other than than shoot. You know, his handles still got some work. Obviously, Clay turned into a really good player on both sides. Um, but Booker's kind of that way where you just can't trust any other stat to be there other than shooting. Um, and with how, I mean, he's, st- he's still what, like, he's like 13 years old. No, he's, <laughs> he's, not, he's, not, he's 19. He's yeah. 19, but he's still like super young. I was obviously joking, but he's like super young, getting his like second start against the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's a tough, this is not a, not the easiest spot in the world for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so I we've kind of been talking about them a long time, but I think that probably warranted because of uh, – of the injury. So, yeah. so I think there's definitely tournament potential here because uh, we, we, we agree that we're worried about night, right? But there's still, um, they still have to score points. And um, we'll mention Markeith Morris. This is going to be the second game of his suspension. So Mar- no Markeith Morris either. Yeah. Um, I think you have to look at um, John. Lure. John. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't get John Lure at all. Um, but yeah, he's a play. <laughs> you're not you're not on him at all no no, no. I, I don't get him at all like I don't understand um why he's like good but um 
Yeah, no, well, I'm... you have a lot of experience with uh, with Caucasian big man. Why don't you remind us? Well, that's that's the what makes John Lori good. What makes him a a Charlotte Hornet at his core? That's the weird thing is he's playing for Phoenix. I just don't get it. It's like he should be in <laughs> Charlotte, right? Yeah, he should be. He should be starting for Marvin Williams. Yeah, like when um, when Cole was going off for the Clippers the other night, I was like, "Why is he in L.A.? <laughs> Come to Charlotte, buddy. We got spots for you." Um, yeah, no, I, I think John Lewis is a great play with Mark Eath out for sure. Um, Forty six hundred on FanDuel. That's it's cash, cash, yeah, easy yeah. cash. Yeah, yeah, I think on DraftKings he's he's a lot higher. So I think I think he's. I don't know if he's. He's a cash for me at five seven. Yeah, he's uh he's passable but not strong. Um, I think the other guy you have to look at here uh, potentially is uh, T J Warren. Yeah, forty four hundred on DK and thirty seven hundred on Fanduel. Yeah, uh, you actually I actually looked at usage rates this season with um, Eric Bledsoe and Markeith Morris off the floor, and T J Warren was second behind. Brandon Knight at 23.4%. Uh, Alex Len was next at 22.3%. So uh, I think Warren, um, Warren warrants uh, consideration. Sorry, that was a terrible alliter- alliteration, but uh, he warrants consideration. He does, yeah. Um, as a tournament play. I, I, I yeah. like him kind of having a step up. And, you know, we like these kind of some more sneaky um, other options outside of Knight uh, because we think he'll – I'll struggle a little bit with Shump. Agreed. Yep, uh, for sure. I like him a lot as well. So, uh, cool. All right, let's keep on moving. we got two more games left. Uh, next one we'll hit on is Philly at Utah. Let me pull up the line here. Uh, no line. Let me refresh. Make sure yeah, I don't, I don't have a line here either. Okay, no line. So, uh, we'll just jump right into it. Philly, um, obviously, you know, we got the first game of Ish Smith back as point guard. Uh, so we we got that. So I think that cleared things up just a little bit as far as, you know, where the minute distribution was going to go. You know, he got over 30 minutes, which I think is probably safe to say that he's probably going to be their starting point guard above 30 minutes from now on. Uh, maybe for like the next two weeks until they get tired of him and bring someone else on, you know, the, yeah. the, the sixer way. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I was actually kind of surprised that he played 31 right off the bat because they do still have – Kendall Marshall there. They still have uh, T.J. McConnell. He was playing a ho- kind of a homecoming game there. I thought I, I, I thought Ish, you know, without any practice time, would see closer to um, 26. It, yeah. But 31 right off the bat is super promising. Yeah. Uh, he, he finished with 27 DK points. So I think, uh, especially against the Jazz, um, I'm not worried about Neto at all. And uh, yeah. no Burks, meaning, I don't know, Trey Burke is going to play – it's going to be Neto and Trey Burke, so I'm good with uh, not with scared. attacking yeah. uh, Ish Smith. Uh, let me see what his salaries are real quick. Is he? He's 4'8 he? on DraftKings. And was, am, I not, am I not seeing him? Oh, yeah, there is. 4'8 on DraftKings, and is he not on FanDuel? Oh, he's 4,500 on FanDuel. 45. Wow, for, for FanDuel is soft with some of these guys. All right, so, yeah, I'm good with him and Cash in, in, in both oh, of those both. formats. Me too, uh, yeah. Uh, so, Ja, Okafor, what was his status? Yeah, he's doubtful. Uh, Brett Brown said he's 50-50 at best. He doesn't expect uh, Ja to play. So, we're, he's, he's doubtful right now with that right, right knee soreness, which makes uh, Nerlens Noel um, a strong consideration. 5,800 on uh, FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I think he's a strong tournament play for one. Yeah. Um, you know, because he showed out, you know, what, what did he put up? Uh, 37.3 DK points uh, last game without Jaw. And uh, let's see, at his implied of 5,600, that puts him at around 22 DK points. So do you feel comfortable with him uh, potentially putting up 26 to 28 DK points that you would consider him in cash? Um. Against no. against against this matchup though, against it's favors. Tough. Yeah, no. If it was not against favors, that that's right. what I was thinking. No, um, no. Yeah, I'm not on him in cash really. Um, but because we've seen him dud pretty hard in New Orleans before. Yeah. I think this is he. He kind of comes with that risk 
Uh, yeah, it is a low floor for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else here? Uh, Canon. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Canon's fine, but I don't even really love him that much. Um, yeah, that's about it. Honestly, Covington for some reason is not playing at all. So yeah, that's a thing, I guess. He's, pro- he's probably going to get traded or something. I, it's just the Sixers way. They, they, they run guys out. They have like an audition and I don't know. And then they get rid of you. They ship you off. That's, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so Utah side. Um, so so I guess. So so favors is questionable, right? Yeah, with back spasms. So if if he was not playing, Nerlens is cash for me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because he's going to be playing against Booker and Trey Lyles and Jeff Withy. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so he is questionable. So that obviously um, is going to be a big question mark for me. Um, yeah, how do you feel about? these guys because i mean obviously if he does play him and hayward are in really good spots here yeah the the line shouldn't be too big i don't think Uh, i would think that it would be huge yeah i would think it's probably like eight or something if i had a guess yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't put it at double digits yeah i would guess seven and a half eight yeah okay so yeah so one news item, you know, Alec Burks out likely out six plus weeks with that fractured left fibula. Um, I don't think it has major implications on this rotation. Uh, Quinn Snyder said what they'll likely do is play Joe Ingles and Elijah Millsap uh, a lot more and some Chris Johnson. Um, those two would kind of pick up the slack for for Burks. Burks has been kind of um, up and down with his minutes anyway. He's been close to like seventeen, I think, on some nights, and then higher mid mid to higher 20s on others so yeah. um i don't think it changes this the team's landscape too much i think um a guy that i'm definitely looking for especially in tournaments is rodney hood uh 4700 on dk and 4500 on fanduel i think this yeah. is a really good spot for him i think you know his 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 minutes on the wing are even more secure um i think barring a blowout he's a good bet to see you know 28 to 29 if not 30 plus uh in this one and um we know that given uh, his when he plays those type of, type of minutes he has big time potential and he just the only thing you have to worry about is that he just does you know uh typical roddy hood things and you know gets like three fouls in two minutes or something that's the only yeah thing. yeah he does have a low floor um yeah but i think if he stays out of foul trouble he's He's kind of a lock for over thirty, right? You said yeah, seven twenty-eight. I, I think I said twenty-eight, twenty-nine, kind of like a, as a baseline okay. with the potential okay. for thirty plus. Yeah, yeah, okay. and barring a blowout. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with your assessment on Utah. Um, if uh, so, if Favors is out, Ugh. Booker. I guess Booker's the play in tournaments. Gordon Hayward's definitely the play in yeah. Game. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I would just expect a really bad game, honestly, than a lot of value. Yeah, yeah and I think Booker's probably the play just because I think there's going to be a lot of missed shots and he has a good shot at, like, double-digit rebounds or something and a yeah. backdoor double-double. But, yeah, Trey Lyles and Jeff Withy aren't going to excite me in the least bit. I know Lyles has played – yeah. Good, you know, sporadically, but not yeah. a guy I'm really counting on at all. Um, yeah, you know, if – if uh, so, assuming Favors plays, what's your take on Hayward and Favors in cash and tournaments? Uh, yeah, so I'm good with um, – I'm good with either of them. I pro- I, I'm good with either of them in, in cash and tournaments. Yeah, I guess that's not like a hot take or anything. I, I, I think um, the Philly is obviously really bad, so I, I really love targeting guys against them, but the only drawback is I worry about the blowout potential. But I'm honestly not really worried about the blowout potential here. So I do think that Favors and Hayward could get like their full allotment of minutes against Philly guys. So I do think that there is a pretty safe floor and a pretty high upside here for both guys. Yeah, I probably 
lean favors because the I think the matchup there is better for him. Yeah, Covington's better than anything they could throw at favors. Yeah, I think he's going to see a good chunk of I, obviously Jeremy Grant. I like, but I don't like Carl Landry. I don't like Rashawn Holmes. Um, so I, I I think favors will eat in this one for sure. Um, yeah. I, I think, like Hayward, I think though. Hayward too, though. Yeah. I mean, Hayward's been great lately, so I'm not yeah. going to knock him either. Yeah, great. Okay, well, let's move on to the last game here. Uh, Sacramento at Golden State. Best and for last. This line, wow. So, um, you know, after saying all all these games, you know, um, I, I guess we should point out that, like, this. This, is a, this, seems, like a, this seems like a low line to me. Yeah. I mean, right? it, might, it honestly might be. So, just – Kind of for reference, the highest line we've talked about so far is 206.5 for Clippers uh, Wizards. 206.5. This line is 222.5. Total, you mean? Total, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was saying the line at 12.5 might be low. Oh, yeah, yeah. The spread's low. Yeah. Yeah, the total, though. Woo! Yeah, you, you want a piece of this game for sure. Uh, yeah. You know, let's start with that. Yeah. You know, let's start with Sacramento. Um, coming off of back to back, they're obviously playing um, on Sunday. Um, yeah, uh, Boogie Cousins against uh, Andrew Bogut, Festus Azili. Um, I'm Boogie's nine nine on yeah. both, and I think I I, I like putting, it putting, putting him and putting it anywhere under ten k. I don't really care the matchup, really. Yeah, I, I am good with him. Me too. He's probably like right up there with my favorite cash game plays. Um, even yeah. with this matchup, you're looking at 105 implied. I mean, come on. Yeah, I think his floor is 40 points, which is what uh, like implied nine nine is what. That's probably that 45. Yeah. So uh, like at yeah, the very least, yeah, I think he's close to his implied. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's safe. He's been playing a lot better lately, too. Just kind of picked it up after a little uh, rough patch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like it for Boogie, too. Um, and I think potentially – I don't know. I, I wonder what his ownership is going to be like. I, that's what I was just about to say. I don't think his ownership level is going to be crazy high in tournaments. I think he's worth a look in tournaments, too, with this matchup. I think so, too. You think yeah. people are – it's a mix, though. Like, recency bias versus matchup, right? Well, even more than recent bias, I'm worried about the line. That people would be like, oh, I, w- I want part of this over under because it's so much higher. Um, that yeah. they'll go him more than like – if we had other games that were like in the 214, 215 range like we right. sometimes do, then that would be one thing. But this is – you know, this is the only 1030 game. Uh, you know, we have up to 9 o'clock, and this is the last late game at 1030, which is usually the higher higher total games. Um, so, yeah, so this is so drastically the best offensive game that I think it, his ownership might be a little inflated because of that. But I don't think it'll be inflated enough where, like, it hits where it should be. So I still think there's value for sure. Agreed. Uh, so uh, you're kind of going down the, the other Sacramento guys. <sighs> Rondo and Gay I don't really love. Um, definitely no cash. Rondo I'm worried about, like – Mostly because I think they could pull a Tony Allen, just leave him wide open, um, which is not good for Rondo. And Gay, obviously, I would get the uh, the Dre slash Iggy treatment, which is uh, horrible. Yeah, for him. yeah. Um, I'm okay with Rondo in tournaments. I don't mind it. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, he'll have to, he'll he'll have his hand in pretty much everything as usual. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't like the matchup, obviously, but I. I I don't know, 8,300, 8,400 on DK and FanDuel. Um, I think he can still be a, uh, you know, a profitable play. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think his price is probably close to what we would expect, kind of like 36 uh, DK points or something like that. Yeah. And um, given the total in this game and the up and down nature, uh, maybe he has a chance of cracking 40. Yeah. He's okay. Yeah. He's okay. Yeah. Uh, in game Caspi, I'm just the matchup. I'm not on here. One's gonna get Iggy, the other one's gonna get Dre, and I don't want really either one of them. Yeah, you uh, you like any uh, Collison exposure in tournaments at all? 
No. Not really. I mean, I get the I get the recent game where you had twenty four, four and five, and I don't know. That's points chasing to me. I don't think there's that. Yeah, much he didn't do that. Here. He didn't do that well on on Sunday. I think he finished with ten points off the bench. I think the only thing is that intrigues me about him is he's playing close to like thirty minutes a game. He picked twenty eight yeah. on Sunday. But that's yeah. yeah. But the the spot isn't right at all. Well, yeah, and like you know, he's come off the bench, which is like somewhat intriguing for guys, but like. Against Golden State, like he's going to off the bench against Golden State's best player, apparently, which is Sean Livingston. <laughs> he was That's lights true. out. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have beat Cleveland if it wasn't for Livingston. I yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. He was yeah, he was the he was the goat in that game for sure. Yeah. So like that's a bad matchup off the bench. So normally where I like Collison has got as teams with bad benches. Um, and that's just not the case here. Livingston would shut him down easily. So uh, yeah, not on him. Uh, but Golden State side, I think obviously this is a great spot to target. <laughs> a lot. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Steph, yeah. I mean, so yeah. Okay, uh, I'll I'll take it after Steph. Go go for it. Yeah, that's all yeah. I have to say. Just yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's move past him. I think uh, one guy in this particular might have a history with the Kings. He might have done something in a quarter once I, I heard. Um, uh, it was, he scored some points, hit some shots, did something. Yeah. Once in a while, obviously we're talking about. Um, Clay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess. No, we're, no, we're talking about Ian Clark. Uh, Ian Clark. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Rush. No, no. Yeah. Clay Thompson. I think, uh, I think people were going to be on him to where, you're not going to get away with him in tournaments. I think people are going to yeah. – enough people are going to bring it up to where yeah. he's not going to be like uh, like 10% owned in tournaments or something. Like people yeah. cash clay still. Yeah. Well, see, that's, that's the thing is um, – so he's definitely not going to be low owned in like higher entry tournaments. Um, you know, that's that's like – like smart guys are going to be on him for sure uh, in tournaments. Um, so you, potentially you would get a discount on ownership in the lower entry tournaments where people like those are just casual players that may not remember that game or that it was Sacramento or like folk like factor in the line. But those type of players like love clay for some reason. They and do. They always go play. Yeah. So That's I don't what think he's saying he did cash him, not, yeah. not just tournaments. Yeah. So, yeah, so I would still take fade. a shot. Yeah, I, I don't think you can completely fade, but I'll yeah. have less. I'll have less yeah. exposure than the field. I'll say that. I mean, you can. Yeah, I. So out of your whole thing, you confuse me a little bit. Are you saying that his ownership is going to be higher in the higher stakes? Because I think the the general public likes clay, so I. I actually maybe think the inverse that is ownership might be higher in the lower stakes. No, I'm, I think it'll be, I, I think it'll be even, I don't think it'll be exactly even, but I, I don't think there will be an ownership discount at either level. That's what I, what I was trying to say. Yeah. So you can fade on a little bit um, based on the ownership, but you, you need a piece. So you're not, it's not a full fade. Yeah. You can't brand a night this. You have to have exposure. Agreed. Yeah, and the matchups. Yeah, the matchups just too good here. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know you can look at Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, all those guys. Um, I think Draymond Green. Uh, yeah, he's priced up, man. Ninety three hundred on DK, ninety two hundred on Fanduel. Yeah. That's that's hefty. Um, what's his implied? Do you have that? Is it maybe yeah. like thirty six or something? Uh, I got it right here. Uh, sorry. Uh, implied 42. His implied is 42? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's high. That is really high. Yeah. So uh, what am I going to do? I I think he's – yeah, 11, though. I, am I really going to – you pay up 700 for Boogie, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I I can't play Boogie and Dream on. No. Like, yeah, he's not cash for me for that reason. Yeah, that's that's hefty, man. Yeah. Um, like I don't think he's a bad play. Like if you just really want to play Draymond in cash, like 
like I'm fine with it, honestly. Like I, I am going to play the better values that are around him, probably. Uh, like yeah, like just a little bit more for for Boogie or for whoever. But he's fine. Yeah, I think like he's not gonna bust. You think his what's his ownership uh, percentage relative to uh, Clay Thompson? Higher. Higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe make some B in tournaments too. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think the play here is to. Um, what is the play here? Yeah, so I think the play here is to either take a stand and fade one of these guys, um, or to stack them in tournaments. I like. I don't mind stacking Clay and Draymond to get unique exposure to like a unique lineup. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think obviously like, that's a good point. Like, you, like the individual ownership is going to be high, but how many are you going to have both of them in their lineup? Not many. Yeah. So that's that might be what I do more often than not. Um, but I, I would probably have more clay exposure than Draymond. Yeah, obviously Steph is a strong play, but ten ten seven and ten nine um, doesn't leave a whole lot of margin for error and um yeah and he's by way of roster flexibility yeah and like this may not be a concern for you but he has like been hampered by whatever right a calf injury yeah the last three games it's technically probable for uh for for monday right now yeah so i like i think he's fine but like i also don't think this is a game where like they would push him if he like just said hey my calf is bothering me um, so that worries me a little bit, right? And I, I pro- I'd rather have uh, Demarcus Cousins at um, eight hundred to a thousand dollars cheaper, anyways. Yeah. yeah, me too. All right. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, not really feeling uh, too many of the uh, the bench guys as usual. Uh, Livingston, Azili, Igudala. Are you like any of those guys? No, um, I don't mind Bogut in tournaments. Yeah. But that's it. He's at uh, forty two hundred on DK and forty three hundred on uh, on Fanduel. The only thing I maybe maybe a sneaky player is Festus Azili uh, because I think uh, there's the potential that uh, Boogie puts Bogut in foul trouble, and Festus has to see some more minutes off the bench than usual. That's all I'll say. I don't think it's a strong play, but it's, I'll just throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. It could also happen the other way where he puts his Zeely in foul trouble and Bogut has to play more. Yeah, but Bogut has to start out on him. That's the thing, you know? Yeah. No, 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 for sure. Yeah. I, I, just, I think that both are fine tournament plays. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. That's the slate. Cool. All right. Well, any last words? No, you want to run through the positions real quick again? I think people yeah. want us to do that. Um, let's do... All right, so point guard. So we got Steph at the top. Uh, you know, we said we were fine. Wall is obviously uh, killing it right now. I think I prefer Wall at a thousand less. Agreed. Um, Chris Paul at nine K, like that too. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Knight. We spent a lot of time talking about kind of the issue with him. Um, and other than that, like I'm going down, and it's pretty brutal on the lower end. Other than Berea at five. We like uh, we like Kemba. Um, yeah, true, true. Yeah, against the Lakers at seventy three. He's he's at seventy three there versus seventy nine on Fanduel. Yeah, so fine. Um, Dragic tournaments. I'm good with against Jared Jack. Sure. D'Angelo Russell maybe in a mm-hmm. potential blowout. Maybe if he though, if yeah. he in tournaments. Maybe, yeah. Um, yeah, Drogic and Bray are kind of the two lower end guys I'm looking and then, at. And then Ish Smith at 4,800, I Ish, like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I forgot about him. Um, yeah, yeah, that's about it. All right. Oh, sure. JJ Berea. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, shooting guard. Um, yeah, so Tyreek is the highest price guy here at 7 8. I, I said I liked you were a little more iffy on him. Yeah. Uh, DeRozan and Butler, I think we agree, kind of cancel each other out. Uh, so we don't like him a lot. Clay is great in tournaments. Um, Middleton's fine in tournaments. 
Oh man, this ain't this ain't great. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty. JJ Redick and Cash at fifty one is fine. Yeah, I think JJ Redick's the cash play here. Yeah. Um, Garrett on, on Temple. Draft, yeah. Garrett Temple. If Gary Neal is out, you can spec there. Um, Rodney Hood. Um, right. Yeah. I like him at forty seven hundred. He was cheaper on Fanduel. Yeah, let me see his price. Um, Rodney Hood is forty five hundred. Yeah, so two hundred dollars cheaper. Okay. And then, man. Yeah, not great. Yeah, that's about it, I think. Okay. Uh, small forward. Uh, you know, we like LeBron here. Um, at 9.8 is definitely reasonable under 10K. Uh, PG, we talked about him pretty extensively. Tournaments. Kawhi, we are fine, but kind of a fringe because of the line. Uh, Hayward and Batum, we liked. Uh, I, I think yeah. comparing those two, I think I like Batum. Uh, I mean, I like Hayward a little more in cash. Batum in a little more in tournaments. Agreed. Okay. That, they're still playing the Lakers and the Sixers, so similar concerns there with the uh, – with the blowouts. Yeah. Uh, Tobias is fine in tournaments. Um, Parsons is okay in tournaments. Yeah. Fournier. Fournier, yeah. Um, TJ Warren, you might you can take a stab at in tournaments just because of the usage rate bump. Yeah. Uh, Pierce, I guess, if you want to get cute. Paul Pierce. Yeah. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, power forward moving on to there. We'd love, uh, Anthony Davis. Yeah. We love Boogie even more at nine, nine. Um, Draymond we like, but just kind of at a weird price point with, you know, the fact that he's so close to Boogie, it's hard to. Right. That, um, yeah, and then these kind of like mid tier guys, we didn't really like a ton of these guys. You know, love Millsap were okay in tournaments. Favors uh, we like, but kind of questionable with this this injury. So watch out for that. No Thad Bosch is okay in tournaments. Aldridge and Dirk and um, and then so kind of going down. It's either the yeah. top guys are kind of getting down to lower in Nerlens. Yeah, I, I kind of like the I kind of like Lure and in, uh, in Cash and Nerlens in tournaments there. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I think Lure's got a safer floor and Nerlens got a higher upside. Don't mind Taj at fifty three. Uh, I think he's better on Fanduel. Let me see. Yeah, Taj is forty seven hundred on Fanduel, so I like him better there. Yeah, uh, Nico is yeah. fine in tournaments. Uh, question is obviously minutes, but if he's going to get above thirty, which I think is. Uh, Safe enough to take that risk in tournaments. Uh, Agreed. To go him, um, Booker and the chance that Booker if favors is out. Yeah. Yeah, and even then, don't like load up every lineup with him. Yeah. Um, Josh Smith. Three tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I'm good with that. Larry Nance was a thing, but I went and Port- Bobby Portis was a thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, we'll go to center, the always underpriced option. And I think we really like the top five guys here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, top four. Yeah, in white time tournaments, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Powell is fine in, in cash and tournaments. Vooch, same. So, so let me rank them, all right? I think okay. it's I think it's uh, DeAndre, number one. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, I go Vooch too. You go Vooch too. Vooch, I, Powell. Yeah, I we can disagree there. I might go Vooch. Uh, probably Vooch is four for me. I okay. I like uh, I like Powell too. I probably Powell two for me, and then <laughs> you throw it between uh Vooch and uh Marchin. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, White side and tournaments. Uh, Towns, if you want. Towns in any other matchup. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no. Uh, Monroe, I think we like in some tournaments. Yeah. He's uh, playing uh, more minutes now. Yeah. Uh, Biombo, if you want to get sneaky with Valentino's be out, his ownership's going to be low and still has some upside. 
Um, you like Frank the Tank, which can't blame you there. Yeah, some tournaments there is, is fine against the Lakers center spot. I, I'm all about that. Yeah. Um, and then and then Boban uh, in, <laughs> in tournaments, if you just, just for want sixty a free month, yeah, sixty bucks right there. Yeah, you know, just add to the prize pool. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, a little a uh, little bogut, a little uh, yeah, a little bogut in uh, in GPPs. Right. Um, yeah, we're off Alex then because we talked about this. The Cavs big men have been a nightmare to deal with, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Off then. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's the slate. All right. So we'll wrap it up there. I don't know. We went too long. So that was, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. We'll wrap it up. Hope you guys had a good Christmas. We are back full schedule from now on. So we'll do um, pods on a regular, you know, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday for the upcoming slates. Got some big slates upcoming. So, uh, you know, we'll do our best. We'll try to keep things short and succinct, but uh, obviously a lot of, a lot of games upcoming. So uh, good luck. Talk to you guys Tuesday. Good luck guys.